everybody. How's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing and showing your support for the show. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff I found for this episode. Starting off over at The Citizen, over at citizen.co.za, Steve Jobs gives a posthumous testimony in an Apple trial. Jurors in an Oakland court have been submerged since the beginning of the week in a debate over whether consumers who bought Apple's iPod between 2006 and 2009 were effectively forced to purchase their music from the California Titans online iTunes store. Jobs' testimony from a few months before his death in October 2011 was played at the hearing on Friday. In excerpts published uh, online news site The Verge, he said that Apple was very concerned about retali- retaliatory measures that could be taken by record companies if songs purchased on iTunes and downloaded to an iPod were then copied onto somebody else's computer. So uh, it goes more into detail about what uh, was said and uh, that I thought it was interesting, which is why we are including it here in this show. From mysinchu.com, the Yotta Phone 2 dual-screen smartphone launches in the UK and Europe. Presented in February at Barcelona's Mobile World Conference 2014, the surprisingly original Yotta Phone 2 is finally available in Europe and the UK. This Android smartphone from Russia, brand Yoda Devices, has screens on both sides, one of which uses e-ink to take battery life above 100 hours in reading mode, which is actually quite good. Located on what would normally be the back of the device, the 4.7-inch e-ink panel is capable of displaying alerts and widgets like stock prices, weather, social networks, etc. in 16 shades of gray, all without waking up the more power-hungry primary screen. Naturally, this feature also allows the smartphone to double as an e-reader. The highest resolution camera on the Yotta phone is on the back, meaning that selfie takers may have the unusual experience of previewing their shots in grayscale. But 16 levels of grayscale is not really, (laughs) it's not that great. Uh, So anyway, uh, pretty interesting. Definitely check it out if uh, you are in Europe. Uh, the next story that we have is from Business Etc. over at businessetc.com in their technology section. Apple Inc. and Samsung Group continue to fight as a sub $1 billion award uh, looms. Samsung might be asking for too much too soon by requesting the $930 million fine it was ordered to pay Apple. Uh, be scrapped altogether. The Apple versus Samsung smartphone conflict has been the, the center stage of smartphone litigation across the globe since 2007, and it might be coming to an end soon. As it enters the federal circuit, Samsung has not asked for a simple revisit to the award price, but rather has asked the feds to dismiss the charges completely, something that I seriously doubt is going to happen. Uh, anyway, most claims have been completely Most claim to have been completely caught off guard by this development from Samsung, which has already made allocations of around $1 billion in cash should it be required to pay Apple if the appeal does not yield any ground. So we'll be keeping an eye on this to see what happens. From CNN over at demoney.cnn.com, CBS has been blacked out for Dish Network subscribers. What? That's right. Six months of negotiations between CBS and Dish Network broke down on Friday night as CBS programming was abruptly blacked out in a number of major television markets. Dish said the interruption in programming affected over 2 million of Dish's 14 million households. 
It is only the second time that TV stations owned by CV CBS have been blacked out. The first blackout came last year in a dispute between CBS and Time Warner Cable. CBS, the owner of the most watched broadcast network in the United States, issued a statement shortly after 7 p.m. Eastern when it said the blackout took effect, saying what CBS seeks is appropriate compensation for the most watched television network with the most popular content in the world, as well as terms that reflect the developing digital marketplace. The company said, we hope that we can reach an agreement very soon so we can all get back to the business of providing the best entertainment, news, and sports to the, to the DISH customers we both serve. Interesting. So we'll see uh, what happens with this, but uh, I, you know, it'll it'll be back soon enough. From Wired.com, Sony celebrates PlayStation's 20th anniversary with a limited edition PS4, uh, which is kind of cool. They are releasing a limited number of specially designed PlayStation 4 consoles that use the original PlayStation's color scheme. And uh, the $499 PlayStation 4 20th Anniversary Edition is also covered in the classic PlayStation Circle Cross Square Triangle symbols, plus a number 2 next to the circle symbols to suggest the number 20. The console includes similarly colored editions of the PlayStation 4's controller, camera, vertical stand, and headset. So they're going to sell 12,300 of these consoles through the online Sony store, Starting Saturday, December 6th. So if you're watching this, it is Saturday, December 6th. At least it is here in the United States uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So definitely uh, go check this out if this is something you want to get. From the Wall Street Journal, Cisco Systems is suing network rival Arista Networks about... Patent infringement. This is a Wall Street Journal report, and uh, it I don't have uh, the access to the full story. However, um, it's because they're claiming that Arista is uh, infringing on an array of Cisco patents and copyrights associated with its networking equipment. You know, this is all pretty much stuff that is commonplace. I just thought that I would mention it here. Over at PCWorld.com, work-life productivity. I love uh, how they've changed the layout. It looks fantastic. Anyway, the website uh, over here in the web and communication software section of the website, there has been a new and improved Skype 7 for Windows. It has been rolled out. Microsoft released Skype 7 for Windows on Friday, complete with a more touch-friendly interface and a new compact mode to help cut down on screen space the app consumes. The new preview version for Windows debuted in October uh, alongside a new version for the Mac. In that version, Skype chats dominated the available white space with large emoticons taking up much of the screen. I have never been a huge fan of Skype for many of these reasons. Microsoft said in its new final release that it had included a new compact view in response to user feedback. So pretty interesting. Uh, definitely check it out if you are a Skype user. That will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com or if you're subscribed on YouTube, right underneath here in the show notes. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.